Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion. It's Friday, May 22nd, 2020, and we do have some stuff to talk about looking out ahead beyond the 10-day time frame. And before you say, oh, that's so far out in time, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, I don't want you to worry about anything. We're trying to get you to where you don't worry about stuff because education helps you to deal with the unknown a lot better. But we do have the technology now to see into the future a good ways to at least know when the pattern could be favorable and that's what we're looking for. When does the window of opportunity open and it looks like that might be coming up in the next week to 10 days or so. We'll take a look at that and more. Speaking of the future, we'll look way out into the future. This is the latest tweet from our buddy Ben Knoll down in New Zealand and he is referencing the 60% chance of uh, the above normal hurricane activity that NOAA uh, forecast yesterday. They put out their forecast. And related to that, Ben talking about his ability here where he can blend these models. He's very good at map creation. Uh, the ECMWF and the UK Met, those are two different meteorological agencies. Uh, they're super blend for the overall activity in the August through October time frame, and you can see that right there, and I'll click on the map in just a moment, we'll take it full size. But he notes that the Atlantic main development region is certainly active, as is the Gulf of Mexico. So if we look at this at full scale, the modeling indicating these darker greens through here above normal precip, and there is a very pronounced corridor, uh, another corridor in the offshore waters, so Bermuda, you're out there in the hurricane highway of the Atlantic. Uh, but this is concerning that the modeling is picking up on anomalous precipitation in areas of the Gulf uh, coming out of the main development region. So you folks in the islands. Uh, now, when you see these browns, don't think of that as, oh, there's not going to be any hurricanes. It doesn't work that way. These are anomalies, departures from normal, based on the modeling out into the future, three months, right? So but the general look is one that shows a very active hurricane season ahead generally speaking and so with that you want to make sure that you're doing your part to be ready all right it's time it's coming i've already had arthur in the atlantic so take that to, to note take that to heart and be ready whatever that means for your personal situation and for everybody it's different all right on the globe scale Nothing going on in the Atlantic Basin right now. Uh, nothing new in the Indian Ocean or Bay of Bengal area now. But we do have this uh, cyclone south of the border. Well, the border? <laughs> I guess the equator is a border, right? It's the border between north and south hemispheres, northern and southern hemispheres. Anyway, tropical storm Manga, or something like that, um, is moving towards Australia. And we can look at that on the forecast here. If it'll load, uh, it doesn't go all the way out far enough into time to show you, but it'll be moving off towards the southeast, and it'll be headed towards Australia uh, and strengthening as it does so a little bit. Kind of late in the game for systems to be forming down that way. But you folks here along the west coast of Australia, especially the northwest coast, pay attention to that. You don't need me to tell you that. You would anyway, but there it is, and I think we're going to see an uptick in activity uh, around this area coming up soon and we'll take a look at that here in just a moment all right satellite view the infrared shot from tropical tidbits all kinds of activity going on but nothing organizing down in the tropics you notice there's more cloud cover down here now in the eastern pacific same thing pieces of energy starting to try to get together um you know we're shifting the se seasons are shifting into more favorable conditions for the tropics. Of course, it's a gradual transition, uh, generally speaking, and then you have these impulses that come along, whether it's the large-scale, longer-duration Madden-Julian oscillation, and that's more of your window of opportunity that lasts for maybe several days to the order of a couple of weeks, and then the shorter fuse, convectively coupled Kelvin wave, which is kind of like taking a Red Bull to get things jolted into action. Those are much shorter lived, usually on the order of a few days, and that's about it. And the phenomenon themselves are very fascinating, but they can both trigger 
tropical cyclone development by way of fostering upward motion in the atmosphere where the air is rising, not sinking, um, more moisture in the atmosphere, and a westerly wind component at about the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere to sort of induce vorticity. You know, if the winds are all blowing in the same direction and very uniform, eh, that doesn't help to create spin. You need some kind of an opposing force to come in and start the thing, the, start things turning, and these convectively coupled Kelvin waves help to do that. Uh, and we're going to see that in the coming days. But for now, um, no issues down in the tropics, just some high clouds streaming across in this neck of the woods. And uh, our buddy Brent, he's over here t getting ready to take off. Literally as I'm recording this, I'll show you a picture of him in a moment. Uh, he's going to be flying up out of the Virgin Islands over here to Miami and then from there to Atlanta and then I am gonna go pick him up with my colleague Mike we'll talk about that at the end but Brent's getting ready to take off from down there and he'll fly through that cirrus debris coming up out of the Western Caribbean uh, look at this large storm system over the Great Plains that's where we're headed the upper level low still spinning here over the eastern US this curious disturbance down here, a little mesoscale convective complex, fancy term for blob of thunderstorms, but mesoscale convective complex sounds cooler than blob of thunderstorms. Um, nothing to worry about there, not going to develop. And it's, isn't it weird that not everything over the water that's a mass of clouds goes on to develop? Isn't that, I mean, that's amazing if you think about it. Not everything does develop. Obviously, we'd have 100 hurricanes in the Atlantic each year, um, you know, this mass of clouds isn't going to develop. This one's not going to develop. That's not going to develop. Why not? Well, that's a story for a whole other day. Maybe we could have another Hurricane U with somebody like Kerry Emanuel from MIT. Boy, wouldn't that be great? Um, and his knowledge of why don't some things develop and others do. <laughs> we could just talk about that for an hour. Really dig deep down into it. Anyway, before I dig myself into a hole of going off on a tangent... Let's get back to the topic at hand. This right here, my friends, is uh, the leftovers of Arthur, believe it or not. A tiny little remnant of vorticity signature, a little thumbprint, if you will, of Arthur. And uh, everything else down in the tropics, generally quiet for now. There's some energy along the intertropical convergence zone. Our storm system over the Great Plains. And here, I'll circle it in red. And then the upper level low and its energy over portions of the east. And that's been creating flooding problems and rain, rain, well, of course, rain causes flooding, usually, unless it's storm surge. Uh, but the pattern will change, and it's going to get hotter in the east. Uh, we'll talk about that more going forward. All right, so on this analysis, the GFS, we're going to take a look at this for two reasons. First, we'll look at the tropical influence and what to look for over the next few days. And then we're going to rewind it back and look at lower 48 weather, severe weather, that kind of thing, and how it relates to what we're getting ready to do, uh, my crew and I, as we head out to the Great Plains to do some testing. All right, so first, the tropics. So this is six-hour mark, so it's about right now that this would be valid. And just to orient you on what's what, nice area of high pressure, trying to build in there, and you can see it kind of ridging in, as we call it, the western side of that Atlantic high centered out here near Bermuda. There it is, right there, the Bermuda high. And it's ridging off to the west, extending, you know, the westward extension of the western Atlantic Ridge. That will pump in copious amounts of moisture. You just follow the wind barbs, right? And you get your idea of the flow at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. And these little pieces of energy all through here, those can trigger showers and thunderstorms and maybe even some severe weather. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Now, when you get these areas of vorticity down here in the tropics, or even up here towards the subtropics, those can bundle the energy better and become tropical cyclones, and that's what we're looking for. So here we are out at 24 hours, finally to 48, nothing going on really, but boy, that ridge trying to establish itself is going to be hot, <clears throat> or hotter, over the southeast and the east coast right in time, <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, Memorial Day. No, I don't have the coronavirus, it's just we got to say that these days. It's ridiculous. Every time I sneeze and I'm outside of my house, I freak out because I think people are looking at me like I'm a zombie. But anyway, I'm fine. It's probably, well, they just cut the grass outside, so 
It's allergies. Anyhow, uh, 48 hours, 72 hours. It does warm up in the east, but trouble brewing over here. We'll get to that, like I said, in a moment. But what I want you to do as I go forward, pay attention to this area right down here. Uh, and in fact, let me just draw a red box and let's just watch this region in here uh, as we go out into time even more. 96 hours, nothing. Five days, nothing. So finally, as we get to about day six and seven, yeah, there's a little piece of energy trying to do something out here. We won't worry about that too much. But after about day seven, some very curious things begin to happen across the Western Hemisphere here, notably coming out of the Southeastern Pacific, this wind shift in here, that convectively coupled Kelvin wave, and we get this cyclonic turning, this Central American gyre, just a large general wind shift down there. A gyre is like a fancy term for a large rotating water or atmosphere, a fluid, if you will. And out of that, you get occasional pieces of energy that break off. And you can see them down there in the Southeast Pacific. The model is trying to, quote, figure this out, end quote, right? You know, it's not really thinking, but it's mathematical equations trying to figure it out. And in the Southeast, uh, or yeah, the Southeast part of this overall mess in the Southwest Caribbean, way, way out into time, yes, something tries to develop. And we've been seeing this time and time and again. Did I say that right? Time and again, whatever. In the models, the Canadian, the Euro, the GFS, it just depends on which one you're looking at. But the bottom line, especially if we look at this you know, as I speed it up, the pattern is going to change to where we develop this wind flow uh, setup, the monsoon trough, the Central American gyre, all kinds of things, the convectively coupled Kelvin wave, that yes, after about day 10, we do need to watch this area, and that would be, hey, I'll just draw the panels in there. There's your window, all right? Nice, pretty window. We just need Bob Ross to come in and paint us some happy trees and whatever outside that window, right? Seriously, that's the window of opportunity. I've been showing my kids Bob Ross on YouTube, so that's where that came from. Um, that's the window of opportunity, and here again, the difference in hyping something up and putting a 10-day forecast out there without context, I am absolutely a believer in the ability of the technology to see when things are going to change. I, you know, and we do it with our health. If a doctor says, oh, you know, your blood pressure is a little high, you should do something about it. You have some warning. Maybe your weight is getting over that magic line to where it's not really cool anymore. You probably want to do something about it. You get early warning in medical stuff, right? And the same is true in the world of weather, okay? So we see these windows of opportunity coming for something to develop, and we become aware. No reason to get upset about it and get worried. Don't worry about something that's 10 days out in the model. Look at the model saying, hey, there's a pattern change coming. I should pay attention a little more over the coming days if I live in an area that is prone to tropical cyclone impacts. Or if you live in an area that's not prone to those impacts and you just like tracking what goes on with hurricanes and whatnot. All right? So we'll be watching that. Now, going out into the future again, pay attention to this area. This is where my team and I are headed starting Sunday, Monday time frame. And yeah, it looks really active in there. See that upper level low in Texas? That's about a week from now. Wednesday, Thursday time frame. Very, very busy out there with periods of showers and thunderstorms. Uh, we can look at that on the Storm Prediction Center site real quick. This is today's outlook. Slight risk over here in the Carolinas. Not too bad for Brent to fly into Atlanta there. Enhanced to slight risk over here in parts of Arkansas, dipping back into Texas. And it's the season. You know, this is it. We get that Bermuda high that builds in offshore, pumps in that moisture, and you get these disturbances that come out of the Rockies and elsewhere. And the battle zone is right through here. It's what you would expect, okay? So, again, it's not scare tactics or worry about the weather. You know, when you worry about the weather is when you don't pay attention to it and it sneaks up on you. That's when you worry about it because you have no warning to speak of, right? All right, so I talked about Brent. Here he is. 
Come on. Let's go, Windows. Wow. <laughs> Took forever. Here he is uh, on the plane, got his mask on, uh, American Airlines requiring everybody to wear a mask. Brent made that mask himself. I didn't realize he was as creative as he is, but he is. And so that's him just a little while ago. He's going to be flying up here to the lower 48 like I talked about. And we're going to discuss this more in my update tomorrow. All right. Now, the other thing I want to show you, uh, speaking of the severe weather, yeah, we saw this for today. Well, yesterday in the San Angelo region uh, of Texas, one of our supporters, known this guy a long time, his name is David, sent me this video. The only thing I got to do is say, David, you got to hold it horizontal. Come on, man. You're killing me with the vertical video. But he did a great job, nevertheless, of documenting this. Look at that sucker. That thing's rotating. Yep, he captured an area like a rotating wall cloud right above his house in the San Angelo area. They had hail, big time hail, uh, severe weather yesterday. And see if he puts his thing horizontal, he might be able to avoid having his finger in there. But if I speed it up, you can really see it rotating there. Fascinating. Good stuff there, David. Well done, sir. Uh, David retired uh, from the Port Arthur, Beaumont, Port Arthur area to San Angelo where he is enjoying, instead of hurricanes, he doesn't enjoy hurricanes, he's in quote-unquote enjoying the threat of severe weather now. So i got to keep him aware of that. And we might even get to bump into David when we're out that way doing some testing. Just real quick, I'm going to go into much more detail about it tomorrow, but just to, in case you're wondering, what the heck are you going to be going out to the plains for? We're going to be testing the weather balloon project, Herbie, the hurricane balloon. And we're also going to test our camera systems, one of our weather stations, it is time to do some testing. Why not test where there's going to be action, right? I did a little bit out on the Outer Banks for Arthur. This will be a much more robust opportunity, and we'll get into more details on that tomorrow. Um, so there you go. David, by the way, thanks for sending me that video, sir. It was very nice to see that. All right, so that is it. Again, the big story here, we're seeing a pattern change coming. Be thankful, be grateful that the technology is there that we can see these windows coming and be ready for them so that they don't sneak up on us. Same thing when we look at the Storm Prediction Center stuff. We know there's a threat of severe weather hours out, days out even in a particular region. Very, very important. We stay ahead of this stuff. And then from there, we can use common sense and our experience to prepare and do what we can to make sure, A, that we don't die. That's the most important thing. And B, maybe protect your property. And yeah, sometimes you can't do that. Then nature's going to win and take your property from you. But we can at least do what we can to mitigate that. And with that positive note, I'll leave you for the rest of your Friday afternoon. Have a good one. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I will be back with more for you tomorrow.